Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl fan. We're going to go back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe like i said my name is fanny lungu and if there's something that you guys want us to react to let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to do it so today i'm going to be reacting to achieving the goal of life and we shout out to the person that suggested this this video is going to be in three parts because it's quite long and i think usually people like to discuss things and hopefully i can achieve that by splitting it in three a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel. Thank you for subscribing. We're very grateful. Hope you guys are doing all right. I may stay blessed. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So the title is Upping the Ante, right? And you guys have been listening to lectures all day long, including Khutbat al Jumu'ah. So I want to make sure that you guys actually up the ante. So I want you to do me a favor and wake up. And the way that you're going to wake up, usually if I was teaching a class, I'd make everybody stand up and stretch, but I'm not going to do that. I just want you to do me a favor, inshallah ta'ala. When I say takbir for Mercy Mission and for this incredible event that they've put together, alhamdulillah, their incredible work, I want you to yell Allahu Akbar at the loudest frequency that you have ever yelled in your life. I want this building to fall apart and rumble, Okay. You guys ready? This is going to wake you up, inshallah. Takbir! <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Now somebody needs to reassure the authorities that nothing's going on in here. Tayyip. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa la udwana illa ala al-zalameen. Wa la'aqibatu al-muttaqeen. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and rush towards the forgiveness of your Lord and a paradise that is as vast as the samawat wal ard, the entire heavens and the earth, and it has been promised for al-muttaqeen. I want you to appreciate how special this ayah is just for a moment because when we talk about the topic of Ihsan, before Ihsan can be achieved, there has to be something that is called Taqwa. And Ihsan is a level above. Ihsan is a step above. And I was, subhanAllah, reading a book called The Principles of Happiness. And there was a quote in there. And the book was based on these principles by a man by the name of Jose Addison. And I want you to listen very closely to what he said. He said that there are three levels, or there are three things that are needed in order to live a happy life. Three things. You're taking notes. It's easy. It's not hard, inshallah. Something to do, something to love, and something to look forward to. Jose Addison. Something to do, something to love, and something to look forward to. Many times people go through the motions of this life and they don't have any real purpose. They go through the motions of this life thinking that they're going to achieve happiness using the same ways and the same methods that so many people have sought to achieve happiness through and gained absolutely nothing but misery and regret and remorse because at the end of the day they felt nothing. They saw nothing. They saw that their lives had went to waste. And many times people seek, as my brother Ammar would say, to be extraordinary, but they end up being extraordinary. No purpose. No purpose. And here when we look through these three principles, I want you to think about it before we refer back to the Qur'an. Why is it that we need these three things? If you have two of them, you will not be a happy person. And this is true Islamically speaking too. But let's look at our lives for a moment. Something to do, something to love, something to look forward to. Whenever a person tries to work towards retirement and they've worked their entire lives to have an early retirement and whenever you're a teenager or whenever you go to college and you're, you're, you're usually susceptible to all the pyramid schemes and all those things that tell you that you can get rich and retire by the age of 25 and mashallah you'll be able to sit back. What happens to people when they retire? 
What happens to people when they have money? What happens to people when they no longer have a necessity of working? You know what they want to do? They still want to work. They start to feel like they're losing meaning in their lives. So that's why you'll see people, subhanAllah, even towards the end of their lives, they have something to love, they have something to look forward to, but they have nothing to do. And because of that, now we need to start thinking of work. They give themselves work. I need to walk around this much every day. I need to do this much every day. Because we all need to feel productive. We need to feel like there is action in our lives. We need to feel like we're working towards something. We need to feel like we're being put to good use. Or else we feel like there is nothing left. Something to love. Many times people are very busy. And they have a lot of work. They make a lot of money. They go through the motions of this life, mashallah, successful in every single aspect except for spirituality. And they, their families start to fall apart. Their businesses are expanding. Their wealth is expanding. Their reputation is expanding. But the family is falling apart. The people that are friends with them are just friends with them because they want their money. And they no longer have any meaningful relationships because... Success has its price. They've got something to do. They've got something to look forward to. But they've got nothing to love. And life falls apart. The wealth becomes a punishment. The success becomes a punishment in this dunya to them. And then sometimes people have something to do and something to love. But you know what happens to celebrities and people who went after fame and who spent their entire lives trying to build their, rep their repertoire so that they could get to a level where everybody admires them and everybody knows their names? You know what happens to them? They shave their heads bald and take a baseball bat and start beating people's cars. They commit suicide in hotel rooms. All they say they want, they start having interviews on TV like Masakin, poor people, and say, all I want is to be able to go out with my family and have an ice cream cone without a camera in my face. Yes, salam, you had that. Nothing to look forward to. The dunya wasn't all that it was made out to be. But unfortunately, most people will be sheep. And they'll go through these motions. And they have nothing. And you know what, dear brothers and sisters, one of the most dangerous things from a deen perspective, one of the worst things that can happen to your faith is when you become part of status quo. Whenever you are on the brink of hypocrisy, because the only thing that you do is you meet the standards of society. The only thing that you do is you give just enough charity so that people want to say, hey, you need to give some more charity. You go to the masjid just enough so people don't say, hey, you need to go to the masjid. You do just enough, you give just enough back so that people accept you, so that you're meeting society standards. And why is that on the brink of hypocrisy? What are the two hardest salawat according to the Prophet wasallam? I can't hear you guys. Fajr and Isha. Now, mashallah, when we look at Isha salah, if you go to any masjid in the country, you'll find that Isha is the most crowded Salah and usually Fajr comes at a close number two. So we can all say, MashaAllah, there's no hypocrisy in the Ummah, right? We're all doing so well. Or maybe Rasulullah said that because, you know, it's hard to wake up for Fajr because you might oversleep and so on and so forth. And Why did the Prophet wasallam say that? And what was the context of that? The context of that, dear brothers and sisters, is that the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, would not bother themselves going to Fajr and Isha because at those times you didn't have chandeliers and lights and those types of things. You go to Fajr and Isha, nobody would know you were there anyway. So hey, I'm meeting society standards. Look, I'm there for Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib. Think about that for a moment. Meeting status quo. Making sure that everything is okay in other people's eyes. Making sure that I'm doing just enough. I give just enough. I do just enough so people will say, MashaAllah, he's a good brother. MashaAllah, she's a good sister. And in reality, you know what you're doing? You're just as guilty as Tiger Woods when he gets caught sleeping with 20 women and he stands up on a stage and he says, I am so sorry. Or John Edwards in the United States, the senator, the people's champion, 
who, caught, who got caught cheating on his cancer-stricken wife after they lost their son in a car accident. And everyone's analyzing how sincere will his apology be on national TV. I am so sorry. Now before that happened, these individuals, these people who get caught and exposed, they were picture-perfect individuals. They were in the magazines with their families holding their kids. MashaAllah, a role model for society. But in reality, you know what they were guilty of doing? They were putting a pretty face to a very ugly relationship. And many times we do that with Allah Azza wa Jal. We put on a pretty face for an ugly relationship. For a very dysfunctional relationship. But society can't know how bad it is. And think about that for a moment, dear brothers and sisters. Those people, when they get caught, are they sad? Are they saying sorry because they actually feel remorseful? Or are they saying sorry because they face the consequences, the societal consequences of those actions because they got exposed? Where were you when you were actually in the process of committing all of the sin? It's just because they got exposed. Now let's take this back to our discussion about Ihsan. Remember, we said that there are three principles of happiness. What are they? Hurry up. Say them back to me. You guys need to wake up. Something to, and then, and then. All of this is answered in the ayah that I read. وَسَارِعُوا and rush something to do. إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ To the forgiveness of your Lord, something to love. وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ And a paradise that is as vast as the heavens and the earth. Allahu Akbar. They're figuring it out now and they're writing books on it. But Allah already spoke it 1400 years ago. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That has been prepared for those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads them to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not just any type of consciousness. Because sometimes you're aware of someone watching you but you don't respect the presence of that person enough to really fear them. You're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because you're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you watch yourself. And taqwa, dear brothers and sisters, we said it's a prerequisite to ihsan. Before we talk about ihsan, we have to talk about taqwa. And to summarize taqwa in one sentence, as the scholars say, taqwa is to avoid al-ma'asi. To avoid the sins. As Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, when you're walking through, bushes, thorny bushes, and you're making sure that you're not getting poked. And if you get poked, you don't keep walking and letting your body tear up. When you get poked, you come back into your path. Because before we can talk about excelling, we need to stay away from those things. We need to make sure that the relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have anything that will make it deficient, that will make it dysfunctional, that will make it a pretty face to an ugly relationship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Ibn Ata' rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a beautiful tafsir of this ayah. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about something to look forward to in Jannah? Because in dunya, you see people who have it all, who get all the millions of dollars that they want, who buy a private island and they're still miserable because this is it. There's nothing left. Very interesting video. I didn't even expect this. Um, I love the three principles he's mentioned. Uh, to do, to love, and something to look forward to. And I'm about to just um, start up my diary thingy. And I think that will be on my first page because it means a lot. As much as we try in this world, one is always going to pull you, to pull you towards it than... Um, the other what i'm trying to say is sometimes people are so focused on work they just want to work 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 even if it means they have nothing to love in return this is why he spoke about losing friendships losing loved ones losing all these things all for the sake because you want to work become rich and the rest will fall into place but sometimes life doesn't play out that way and sometimes you have things to love but then you're slacking on work and just crazy and sometimes even if you have something to love 
something to do you have nothing to look forward to which is also insane it's something that we should sit down and actually think about and just analyze and just go deeper into it think deeper than just the surface level of things other than the knowledge we're getting from this video go deeper think and see how that may be applicable to your life and yeah so let me get back to the rest of the videos 